Today, everyone, so today we'll be discussing Section 18, Article 3 of the Bill of Rights, and it involves involuntary servitude. So what does the provision say? In paragraph 1 of Section 18, it says that no person shall be detained solely by reason of his political beliefs and aspirations, while paragraph 2 provides that no involuntary servitude in any form shall exist except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted. So in the first paragraph, it says that no person shall be detained solely by reason of his political beliefs or aspirations. Um, in the book of Bernas, it says that the state cannot hold political prisoners. While in the case of Rakhiza versus Bradford, it held that the accused being political prisoners subject to the civil jurisdiction of ordinary courts of justice, if they are to be prosecuted at all, the army has no jurisdiction, nor power, nor authority from all legal standpoints to continue holding them in restraint. They are entitled as a matter of fundamental right to be immediately released, any allegation as to whether a war has ended or not. Well, paragraph 2 of this section provides that a condition of enforced compulsory service of to another, regardless of its form, is prohibited. So involuntary servitude is every condition of enforced or compulsory service of one to another, no matter under what form of such servitude may be distinguished. So what is involuntary servitude? So involuntary servitude is the condition of one who is compelled by force, coercion, or imprisonment, and against his will to labor for another, whether he is paid or not. So it involves, it involves slavery, which is the civil relation in which one man has absolute power over the life, fortune, and liberty of another. And we have peonage, or a condition of enforced servitude by which the servitor is restrained of his liberty and compelled to labor in liquidation of some debt or obligation, real or pretended, against his will. So we have to remember the general rule is that no involuntary service in any form shall exist. We have to take um, into consideration, we remember in our obligon, na sinasabi doon, um, when the obligation is to do, and it is a specific obligation, eh, you cannot compel your debtor or the obligor to perform such act because it constitutes to this um, involuntary servitude and it is prohibited. It is in China in our um, constitution, in our Bill of Rights, that it is prohibited. So violation of which... Um, it equates to violation of our rights and therefore is unconstitutional. So yun na nga, pinapagbawal talaga yung involuntary servitude. We have to remember this by heart. So we go to the exceptions to the rule. So what are the exceptions? One is we have punishment for a crime for which the party shall have been duly convicted or what, what was provided for in Section 18, as we mentioned a while ago. Second is personal military or civil service in the interest of national defense. So Section 4, Article 2. Third is naval enlistment or to remain in service until the end of the voyage so that the crew would not desert the ship, making it difficult for the owners to recruit new hands to continue the voyage. Fourth is possum comitatus or in pursuit of persons who might have violated the law. The authorities might command all male inhabitants of a certain age to assist them. Then we have return to work order in industries affected by public interest. So a return to work order in relation to labor cases involving um, industries affected by public interest is so imperative is the order in fact that it, it is not even considered violative of the right against involuntary servitude. Then lastly, we have patria potestas or those emanci unemancipated minors which are obliged to obey their parents so long as they are under parental power and to observe respect and reverence to them as always. So it, this is provided for in Article 311 of the Civil Code that um, obeying your parents, following their, um, following their commands or giving them respect is not a form of involuntary servitude under this section. So we shortly discussed the case of Imbong versus Ochoa. So this case was also discussed in our Constitution and in, in other law subjects. It's a very, uh, it's a landmark case that is very, um, it is very relevant. So in this case, it discussed RA number 10354, otherwise known as the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act of 2012. So in Reproductive Health Act. So this law, it guaranteed the universal and free access to nearly all modern contraceptives living in poverty through governmental health centers. So yung mga consolidated petitions here, it assailed the law as unconstitutional. So it says, 
uh, it violated the following. So the right to life of the unborn child, yung right to health, right to religious freedom. Then we have, yung related sa topic natin for today, it's the prohibition against involuntary servitude in so far as it compels medical practitioners under the pain of criminal punishment to render 48 hours of pro bono service to indigent women to be accredited under the Phil Health Program. So sinasabi na parang magre-render nga yung mga doctors natin, yung mga um, medical practitioners natin, 48 hours pro bono, pro bono, which means na um, it's for free, hindi sila babayaran. So other issues that were raised was um, equal protection, due process clause, right to privacy, non-delegation of legislative authority, and local autonomy. If you want to know the whole gist uh, and the whole um, the whole context of this case, you may read it online. And the, so the main issue here is that whether the RH law is unconstitutional. So the court held that no. Uh, as regards involuntary servitude, the RH law is not un uh, in, is not un unconstitutional in this aspect because the practice of medicine is undeniably imbued with public interest that it, it is both a power and a duty of the state to control and regulate it in order to promet, protect and promote the public welfare. The practice of medicine is not a right but a privilege burden, burdened with conditions as it directly involves the very lives of the people. So a, a reading of the assailed provision reveals that it only encourages private and non-government reproductive health care service providers to render pro bono service. So clearly, no compulsion, force, or threat is made upon them to render pro bono service against their will. The rendering of pro bono service, a prerequisite to accreditation with PhilHealth, is not an unreasonable burden, but rather a necessary incentive imposed by the Congress in the furtherance of a pre uh, perceived legitimate state interest. It should be emphasized that consensuous objectors are exempt from this provision as long as their religious beliefs and convictions do not allow them to render rep rep reproductive health service pro bono or otherwise. So yun na, in this case, with, as regards yung um, involuntary service, hindi naman daw siya going against the constitutional provision. So thank you for listening and I hope you learned something um, from section 18. I'll post more for constitutional law and political law. Thank you for listening.